Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is June 2nd. In 1953, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II took place and the whole country joined in celebration. This is a personal account from that momentous day. The only problem on the actual day was the typical British weather. It poured with rain. But that didn't stop people all over the country holding parties in the decorated streets of their towns and cities. And in London, the roads were packed with people waiting to see the processions that took place. The massed London crowds refused to be downhearted by the weather, and most of them had spent the night before on the crowded pavements waiting for this special day to begin. And for the first time ever, the ordinary people of Britain were going to be able to watch a monarch's coronation in their own homes. It was announced earlier in the year that the crowning of the queen would be televised and the sales of TV sets rocketed. Apparently, there had been much controversy in the government as to whether it would be right and proper to televise such a solemn occasion. Several members members of the cabinet at the time, including Sir Winston Churchill, urged the queen to spare herself the strain of the heat and glare of the cameras by refusing to have the ceremony televised. The Queen received this message coldly and refused to listen to their their protests. The young Queen personally routed the Earl Marshal, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Sir Winston Churchill, and the Cabinet. She had made her decision. Her motivation was clear. Nothing must stand between her crowning and her people's right to participate. So on June 2, 1953, at 11 o'clock, all over the country, people settled down in front of their television sets. Compared to the present day ones, these television sets were quite primitive. The pictures were black and white as color sets were not available then, and the tiny 14-inch screen was the most popular size. The Queen arrived at Westminster Abbey looking radiant, but there was a problem in the Abbey, the carpet. The carpet in the Abbey had been laid with pile running the wrong way, which meant that the Queen's robes had trouble gliding easily over the carpet pile. The metal fringe on the queen's golden mantle caught in the pile of the carpet and clawed her back when she tried to move forward. The queen had to tell the Archbishop of Canterbury, get me started. Another problem was that the holy oil which, with which the queen was to be anointed at the ceremony and which had been used at her father's coronation had been destroyed during a World War II bombing raid and the firm who made it had gone out of business. But fortunately, an elder relative of the firm had kept a few ounces of the original base and a new batch was quickly made up. The crowning ceremony took place exactly as it laid down in the history books, and when St. Edward's crown, this crown is only ever used for actual crowning, was placed on her head, the whole country watching on their television sets joined in as one celebration. So in spite of the rain, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II was certainly a day to remember. God save the Queen. And in 1935, Babe Ruth was arguably one of the greatest baseball players to ever exist. Hell, his name alone means the baddest person to walk this earth. While he earned countless accolades, Ruth couldn't play on that field for the rest of his life. Following Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees runs, Ruth joined the Boston Braves in February of 1935. And much like Brett Favre, the player didn't want to step away from the game. At the age of 40, Ruth saw better days in his acclaimed career. His final season with the Yankees found him only making 22 home runs, and at that point he hadn't hit a hit for under 30 home runs in a season since 1925. The Yankees were willing to trade him to the Braves and after a lackluster season. Ruth's return to Boston was a big deal for the locals. After leaving the Red Sox, the franchise failed at returning to the World Series. The Braves were also on the hunt to obtain another World Series win. Ruth's time with the Braves had him pulling double duty. Aside from being a player, he was signed as a vice president. Upon his first Boston game in 16 years, 25,000 people came to see their golden child return. Ruth delivered big time by earning every brave run in their 4-2 win over the New York Giants. Newspapers in the area were praising his performance, and the rest of the MLB took notice. Unfortunately, his comeback game was the only great thing about his return. He would become a complete train wreck on the field due to his physical well-being. In early May, he wanted to retire before things got worse. Braves owner Emo Fuchs suggested that he stayed until at least Memorial Day. Fuchs assumed Ruth would change his mind following some wins under his belt. Ultimately and unfortunately, Ruth would continue to see his stats go down the drain throughout the numerous games. After major major arguments 
Ruth officially retired from the game on June 2, 1935. His final season found him with only 11 runs and 6 home runs. After hanging it up, he wanted to sink his time into managing a team. Unfortunately, no one was hiring until two years later. While Cleveland Indians were looking, they stated that Ruth wasn't fit for the job. They weren't the only ones closing the door on Ruth. The main reasons for teams not looking at him was his reckless behavior. Upon his death on August 16, 1948, baseball players and fans paid their respects to the legend. While he didn't conclude his career the way he wanted, Ruth still managed to become a baseball great. And then finally, 1966, Surveyor 2 was the first in a series of seven U.S. missions to the moon that preceded Apollo. Five of the seven missions were successful. Surveyor 1 was launched on May 30, 1966 and landed on June 2nd. The mission's objectives were to soft land on the moon and to collect information on lunar rigolith. The first Surveyor spacecraft carried only a television camera system. The spacecraft landed on a relatively smooth mare surface, an Oceus Procellarum, the Ocean of Storms. The Surveyor 1 landing site is also one of the ideas areas identified by Project Constellation as a high-priority target for future human lunar exploration. The scene shows the spacecraft just south of the subdued 40-meter diameter crater and about 110 meters northwest of a 190-meter diameter crater lined with boulders. The landing site is in the northeast corner of the Flamsteed Ring, a 100-kilometer diameter impact crater almost completely buried by mar lava so, such that all that remains exposed is the upper part of the original crater rim. Surveyor 1 collected over 11,000 images, most during the first lunar day between landing and July 7, 1966. The spacecraft continued to operate until January 7, 1967. The Surveyor images demonstrated that lunar surface was strong enough to support a landed vehicle or a human. The detailed images also indicated that the surface was composed of a granular material interpreted to be produced by the impact of various sized meteors over billions of years. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com Queen, Ing- Queen Elizabeth II coronation at www.historic-uk.com, Babe Ruth retires at history101.com, and the Surveyor 1 moon landing at loc.sese.asu.edu. The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.